What's up guys, this episode we're gonna be talking about some Ruby basics, specifically the difference between strings and symbols in Ruby and why Rails tends to use symbols all over the place. This is something that confused me a lot as a beginner and coming from Python or another language that where there's only strings, it was hard to understand why we had symbols and what they were useful for. So that's what I want to explain in this episode. So let's open up the Rails console and take a look at strings versus symbols really fast. So a string is anything where it's got characters inside of double quotes or single quotes. If you create this, it's going to then go take those characters, put them in memory somewhere, and whenever you stop referencing them, it removes them when you're not needing it anymore. If you remove all references to that, then it will get rid of it. So if you do that inside of a method, when the method ends, it will remove those strings from memory because you don't need them anymore unless you save them in a variable outside of that method. So that's a string. You can add strings together and you can say, uh, let's create a new string. So it creates two new strings and then it creates a third string with everything together and it gets rid of the first two strings. So that is going to be doing more memory manipulation. But a symbol is different than this and a symbol um, like ASDF will start with a colon and have no ending characters. So it's not a colon on both sides, it's just a colon on one side. And a symbol is going to allocate memory with the ASDF in memory, but it's not going to get rid of it. And that's the big difference. When you create a symbol, it rarely ever will remove from memory. And the reason for that is for speed. So there's a benefit you get to doing that, but you have to take advantage of it carefully. Otherwise, you could end up with a whole bunch of stuff that you added to memory and uh, never gets used and never gets garbage collected. And that would be called a memory leak because eventually you will run out of memory. Now an easy way for us to tell if we're creating new ob objects in memory or referencing existing ones is to check the object's ID. And so every object in Ruby has this object ID method. And if you call that on a string, it's going to return a number to you. But if you call it again on a new string, it will give you a different number. So we can do this a bunch of times and that number is going to change every time because it's allocating a new string in memory and then asking for the ID from it and then it gets rid of it and the next line creates a new string for ASDF. So we've basically just done a, a couple of things by adding stuff and removing stuff from memory. But if we do this with a symbol, we will have a single object ID no matter how many times we reference that symbol. And so it's a lot faster because we're not allocating new stuff in memory at all and we're not removing things either. We've gone and put it in the first time and we left it there and every future time we'll just go look that up. And that's all there is to it. And strings, for example, can add things together like we did before, but you cannot do that with symbols. Symbols are a single hard-coded-esque string that is uh, just saved in memory and that's it. So there's no ability for you to um, create a new one like this by adding two symbols together. They're not like strings in that sense. They're more meant for hard-coded values. Now you might be thinking, well, what's the point of all this? Well, if we open up a Rails application, we can take a look at the use of symbols here. And just for quick reference, all of these purple snippets of code here are symbols and all of the strings are in yellow. And so when we're doing this stuff, we are typically using symbols in our controllers and in our models and other things like that in our routes. And we're using these symbols because they're faster. And that's the main reason for this. Because when we create this before action, we're calling a method with the same name as the symbol. So set project which is down here, we have set project, and the name for this method is never going to change. So if we use a symbol, we can reference it faster. We're going to be able to grab that very quickly and look up the method and then call it because we know that that name is always going to be the same. We don't need to use a string there. We can use a symbol and it will be faster. And the reason it's faster is because rather than a string allocating and deallocating memory every single time that this 
controller is requested. We are going to reference it in memory one time with the symbol, and then we can look it up very, very fast because we're not doing that extra work of allocating and deallocating memory. And you might think that that's very simple, um, that maybe it's not gonna give a big performance improvement, but if we do this all over the place, it's going to add speed to our application in various different ways. And that's why you see all of these symbols in your Rails controllers, in your routes, and your models, because those method names, your database columns rarely change. And so if we just use symbols instead, that can make speed improvements, tiny speed improvements everywhere. And if you have a fast application that's getting lots of requests, uh, like GitHub or Shopify, that is something where you need it to be very quick. And so these speed improvements can make a big difference there. So now you might be asking why we have a string down here for our notice message every time we create successfully a new project. Well, the reason for that is because symbols cannot contain spaces in their normal syntax. What you can do, however, is take a string and put a colon before it, which creates a symbol that allows spaces in it, but it's actually a string inside. Um, so it's kind of strange and allows you to skirt around some of the symbol syntax. But the problem is what this is doing is creating a string in memory and then converting it to a symbol. So if we're already making a string, we're just doing extra work to convert it to a symbol. So you might as well just leave it a string. So that is the reason why you see strings in those cases. Now, the last thing that I want to mention here is strings seem to have two formats. One is with the colon on the left side. The other is a string like this, or a symbol like this, where there's a colon on the right side. What's the difference? The reason comes down to hashes. So if you were using an early, early, early version of Ruby, like 187, you would be able to create a hash like this, just like the one up above. So if we were doing this in the same syntax, you would have this, um, and it would look like that. So one thing to remember is that the last set of arguments to any function can be a hash, and you don't have to specify the curly braces. They're optional in that case. So what you're actually doing here is calling before action with curly braces around the ending uh, options. So it's pretty handy that you can do that and just get rid of those curly braces because Ruby knows to take those and combine them all into one hash. That's pretty nifty syntax. And like you probably already know, parentheses are optional. So when you're calling before action here, you're really calling something like this. And normally in the old versions of Ruby, we'd have to use this in the long syntax with this fat arrow. But that is adding three extra characters compared to the new syntax where we can move the colon to the right side. And that's our separator. And so this saves three characters every single item you have in your hash. And if you have a whole bunch of these, your hash could be really, really, really long and saving those extra characters can be pretty handy. So that's what they did in one of the early Ruby versions, either 2.0, I believe was the one where it officially came out and maybe 193 added support for it. Um, but basically they decided, hey, this syntax is a little long. Let's see if we can make some special syntax for symbols. And both of these are equally valid. You can use either one of those just fine and it doesn't matter. Now, the last thing I wanna mention here because I talked about it, um, when we are using this before action up here, we're actually calling a method that looks something like this. Before action takes a method name and then it has a hash of options at the end. So Ruby knows when you call this method up here to take this first argument and put it in method name and then the rest of this appears to be a hash. So it's gonna take all of those other hash uh, keys and values and stuff them into the options variable. That way you don't have to define each one of these out individually later on. And you can save yourself a little bit of syntax here without having to put the curly braces in there. And so that's the way that this is really working. This is calling this method right here and Ruby's just smart enough to handle that extra optional syntax. So that's really the difference between strings and symbols in Ruby and why you see symbols all over the place in Rails. 
and why the syntax of those symbols can be a little bit different in different cases. So that is the basics of symbols and strings. If you guys have more questions about basics of Ruby and stuff like that, we're gonna be diving into more of that, so let me know in the comments below, and we'll talk about those things in the future.